Right, so the prospect of British troops being sent into Israel has come up in conversation a time or two now, hasn't it? We know the US already have a military presence there. They're currently building a big fat air base in the Israeli Negev Desert, did you know? It comprises the southern half of the country, south of the West Bank. There could already be US troops there as a result of that. But could UK ones be going there is the question that a lot of people have been asked. It's a question being asked right now because I'm making this video. But because shortly before Christmas, when we were very much distracted by the actual goings on in Israel, the genocide, and of course very much not reported by the mainstream media, all of that military activity at that UK airbase in Cyprus that we've been letting the US use as well, that have been making an awful lot of secretive flights to and from Israel, of which the Tory government is telling us nothing about. Well, all of a sudden, activity has increased there again. And that activity has seen an increase in British military personnel being stationed there as well. Right, so we're back to that airbase in Cyprus, folks. Regular viewers might remember I covered the list a little bit last month with the Akrotiri RAF base on Cyprus. RAF Akrotiri was clearly being used to make flights into and out of Israel. Of course, the Tories were questioned on what was going on, but they pleaded national security so as to not make it public and, of course, to avoid answering the question as well. It has led to the spectacle of... Weapons being transported from a UK airbase on behalf of the US? Possibly. This was denied. But what is a Tory denial worth these days? It hasn't done much to alleviate scepticism, let's put it that way, when the UK remains resolutely on Israel's side, at least our government and the official opposition does, when most of us would check the window right now if any of them told us it was raining. But on the 12th of December, things changed from just flights going into and out of Cyprus and ponderment about what they might be carrying because as declassified UK have discovered some 500 British troops have been sent to and have been stationed at Akrotiri begging the question of why are they there and what are they for? Now since October 7th questions have been put to the government regarding the British military response given their hurried and emphatic support for Israel completely without equivocation apparently it would seem completely contrary to that of the nation now and on the 14th of November, a question by Labour Shadow Defence Secretary John Healy, most recently posing with Keir Starmer in bomber jackets, how fitting, to Defence Minister James Heapy, sought to ask if there had been any UK troop movements to any UK air bases in the Mediterranean. Now, the UK has such bases in the Mediterranean, Cyprus being the obvious one that we're talking about now. There's also an air base in Gibraltar, but Heapy didn't mention that one. Instead, in his reply to Healy on the 20th of November, Heapy said, since the 7th of October 2023, there have been an increase of approximately 1,000 service personnel deployed to the sovereign base areas on the island of Cyprus and the eastern Mediterranean to support contingency planning and humanitarian objectives across the region. This figure remains under review. No additional military personnel have been deployed to Oman beyond those taking part in planned activity. Well, that's all very interesting, isn't it? Firstly, I have to say, somebody please buy James Heapy a bloody atlas because a man isn't in the Mediterranean, as per John Heady's question. Its coastline consists of the Persian Gulf and the Arabian Sea. It borders Yemen to the east, for heaven's sake. True enough, we do have an airbase there, though. If we're now going to include the Arabian Peninsula as Mediterranean, we have bases in Qatar and Bahrain as well. But Heapy never mentioned these in his reply either. His reply consisted only of Cyprus and the eastern Mediterranean, so we can... Ignore Gibraltar then as well, I presume. The reply specifically mentions no additional military personnel being deployed in Oman beyond those taking part in planned activity, whatever that is. So there could be some there. He just won't explicitly say what they're there for and how many. Bordering Yemen, looking across the Persian Gulf at Iran, though. Well, a conspiracy theorist might have some fun with that, given the media frothing at the mouth of the actions of Iran-backed Yemen right now. But let's park that one for a moment. It's been covered in other videos and... Well, I can see it coming back around at some point in the future. So maybe there are troops in the Oman, just get back to the point. But Heapy confirmed there were some in Cyprus. He did confirm that, where we know the UK airbase has been making flights into and out of Israel. Well, Alba Party MP Kenny McCaskill wasn't satisfied with this response, and he wanted to know how many troops were specifically on Cyprus, given what we know has been happening at RAF Akrotiri. Did he expect an answer? Well, that would be refreshing, wouldn't it? Specifics from a Tory? Well, would you Adam and Eve it, though? Heapy did actually tell him. Apparently, 500 additional service personnel have been stationed in Cyprus. 
Now, it should be noted that RAF Akrotiri isn't the only UK military base on Cyprus. There is also RAF Truados, which came up in the Edward Snowden files as being at least in part funded by the US National Security Agency. So read into that what you will. The oldest UK base on the island it is, incidentally, as well, used for intelligence gathering as well as another intelligence gathering station called Aos Nikolaus. There are additional battalion housing elsewhere on the island too. So it's fair to say that if half of the recently deployed 1,000 military personnel deployed in the Med are in Cyprus, and UK Air Base apparently takes up about 3% of the whole island of Cyprus, there is every reason to suspect they could or should be expecting to be used in some form in Israel. They could be there on humanitarian grounds or just as a precaution. We don't know. But of course the worry is they're going to be deployed in Gaza to fight with the IDF. Why else would 500 extra staff be sent to Cyprus of all places given what is happening just 180 kilometres away in Israel? Given Sunak's bullishness and acquiescence to Netanyahu, that is the knee-jerk concern that should be the immediate thought that springs to all of our minds, is it not? The other concern is though, where are the other 500 troops then? We know they are there. The Tories have said so. They said there's a thousand of them. But they've now only told us where they aren't. 500 troops, as many as you boosted the garrison by on Cyprus, to just take part in planned activities in a man, is it? Why didn't you just tell us they were there then? James Heapy didn't do that, did he? Besides which, planned activities, that sounds rather temporary, doesn't it? How many are there? How temporary will temporary be? These are questions for the minister. The easiest and biggest question to give to, to ask, given he has been so forth, healthily forthcoming, is to just ask him where the other 500 troops are. They could be in any of the places I've just mentioned, because as I say, he's, he's only told us where they aren't. That should be a concern. Are they also on the Arabian Peninsula in Bahrain and Qatar? All this rhetoric about Iran again. Are they there for that? Stationed along the Persian Gulf, staring across the water at Iran, making faces maybe? Functionally, why are any of these troops there? For what purpose? Are there more US personnel there as well? Is the other question that springs to my mind. If they're sending more UK personnel out there, are there more Americans there? What about other nations too? That would really set sphincters twitching, but <laughs> Heapy wasn't going to confirm that one. There was further information in Heapy's reply, so we sent troops to Egypt, Lebanon, and Israel. Well, Egypt's on the Mediterranean, isn't it? So Israel itself. We don't have bases there. So, yeah, Heapy's language. Have we actually sent troops into Israel? Have we actually sent them into Egypt and Lebanon too? Begs the question now, doesn't it? Confirmation that we've got troops in Israel, though. Why? Well, apparently it is to support contingency planning and UK humanitarian aid efforts. Well, so far we've seen what Israeli humanitarianism looks like, haven't we? Dropping bombs on refugee camps, just as a for instance. Whoops, that's regrettable, apparently, because we dropped the wrong size. That was their excuse. Why drop a bomb on a refugee camp at all? We have troops there now aiding that in some respect? Humanitarianism? <laughs> yeah, that bothers me. What about Lebanon and Egypt, though? Is that to keep Gazans in or let them out? What are you up to there? Israel has been bombing Lebanon as well, whilst it has been raising Gaza. Hasn't got so much prominence in the news. So are we playing both sides here? Now that said, I can't really see us siding with Hezbollah, can you? Declassified also reported that the total number of military personnel now on Cyprus is 2,717, plus 273 civil servants. We also know, in addition to this, that there are members of the SAS in Cyprus, though after a D-notice got slapped down on any media being able to talk about that or ask questions about that, we have no idea what they've been involved in or why they are there, and the UK military refuses to confirm or deny if they've been on missions in Israel or Gaza. Whatever has been going on in Cyprus up until now, it is clearly a staging ground of increasing magnitude for something, and we aren't being told what. And if the British presence on Cyprus has come as a revelation to you, you should absolutely watch this video next, which will explain all of the background of this one, all of the context that you need to know, and I'll hopefully catch you on the next vid. Cheers, folks.